Collecting Sonic the Hedgehog animation cells is one of the most interesting things to ever do. It's not every day you can say you own an animation cell of Robotnik or Tail Smoking, but certain aspects make collecting fun like funny expressions, certain poses, memorable scenes, etc. One of the, if not, the most important aspect of collecting is rarity. Would you believe there are actual rare Sonic cells? Yeah, kinda hard to believe, but it's true. If you take Sonic CD cells and Sonic OVA cells into account, then yes, there is rarity to those, but what about the more common stuff like Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? You'd be surprised, as there are quite some rare Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog items. How can anything from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog be rare, you ask? Well, there's at least two episodes that have had stuff from it that are very interesting to talk about, so we'll be talking about those. So today, I'll show you the rarest Sonic animation cells out there. So let's begin with the earliest instance of animated Sonic. Uh, oh boy. Okay, so there was some trouble with this one. It was either Sonic CD or Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Take a wild guess which one came first. Aired on September 6, 1993, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog would make Sonic's first animated cartoon appearance for general audiences alike and start at the ground point of what the hell am I looking at for the Sonic series. Now don't get me wrong, I love the show and I think it's one of the more interesting takes on Sonic. But not a lot of people know there was a pilot made for the show. Like any other show, a pilot is made to convince companies to pick up the show. Dated 1992, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog would actually be Sonic's first time being animated outside of Japan. How we got this pilot is pretty interesting on its own, but that's a story for another time. So what's the deal with cells for this pilot? Well, not to break your high-hearted spirit, but absolutely nothing from this pilot has ever surfaced. The real interesting thing about the pilot is that all the characters have shading, so it's really distinctively easy to see if there have been any cells from the pilot. Luckily for you, I do own this early model production cell of Sonic still with his blue arms, so that's something. That's not really screen used, so how about we talk about stuff that was screen used. Sonic Breakout and Mac Hopper, being the 6th and 31st episodes in the series, are one of the best looking at animated episodes due to the animation studio behind them, Yang Ying, an animation studio in Taiwan and China, though not sure which one helped worked on the series. Now, what are so special about these cells in particular that separate the kids from the men with collecting? Back in 2009, an eBay seller had a bunch of cells and sketches from these episodes. Okay, sounds like any other seller when they have stuff to sell, so what's the problem? The problem? They were all sold in lots. Yeah, see the problem here? Not only did this make it harder for you to want certain stuff from these episodes, you got left with a whole lot of I don't want these other ones. And on top of that, from what I heard, these lots sold for mere pennies. Man, what was I doing back in 2009? Oh yeah, playing a certain online kids game. Eventually, some cells from these lots would start getting sold separately, but majority of it was not. And every few months and years, stuff from these episodes appear, making it one of the hardest things to get from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Not to mention, Sonic Breakout is the episode where that famous Dr. Robotnik image comes from. Everyone knows about it. It's one of the images that helped start meme culture, so its impact is pretty huge. So, who's the lucky person to own this legendary cell? No one knows. I don't even think the person who bought it knows. We have not seen or heard about the person who owns the one. What about a person who owns cells from this episode? Here's all the cells I have from this episode. This Tails is from scene 3. Unfortunately, he is stuck to the back of the cardboard, and if I wanted to take it off, I would also remove the paint from the cell, so I have to leave it on. This amazing shot of Sonic holding change from scene 17. This shot of Sonic holding the Crack Ups magazine from scene 19. This really funny shot of Grounder and Scratch holding Sonic from scene 182. This small shot of Dr. Robotnik, Grounder, and Scratch holding Sonic from scene 185. The sketch of Dr. Robotnik from scene 185A. Two cells of Scratch and Grounder holding Sonic from scene 186. This Sonic from scene 195. This really nice shot of a furious Dr. Robotnik from scene 198. This awesome shot of Dr. Robotnik in Sonic's face from scene 202. This huge shot of Sonic regretting his life decisions from scene 207. This insanely nice shot of Scratch and Grounder holding Sonic from scene 211. 
And lastly, this unused cell of Sonic from scene 217, which doesn't appear in the episode. What about cells from Mech Hopper? I have some as well. This very odd shot of Mech Hopper throwing linked dogs at Sonic from scene 125. Two cells of Sonic from scene 127. Sonic being caught from scene 128. This huge shot of Grounder from scene 132. This Mech Hopper that doesn't have a scene number but appears after the Grounder. These cells of Mech Hopper, Scratch, and Grounder that are from scene 137. This shot of Sonic with linked dogs around him. This very questionable shot of Sonic, Tails, and Mech Hopper from scene 150. Two cells of Sonic and Mech Hopper on a boat from scene 161. And lastly, this nice pan shot of Scratch and Grounder from scene 167. As for anything memorable, Mech Hopper really doesn't have anything significant, so moving on. September 23rd, 1993, Sonic CD was released to the world and regarded as the best 2D Sonic game for the longest time. Still a good game, but not one of the top anymore. Sonic CD was one of the first games in the series to introduce an opening FMV and ending FMV. While being converted from film to sprites on the original Sega CD version, a lot of scenes were missing in this version. In the PC and Gems collection, they would use the uncompressed FMVs instead of the compressed FMVs. So we got a better look at what we missed out on, and got a better frame rate. But when did they start working on the animations? Well thanks to early prototypes being dumped, the first instance of the intro being implemented is in the 510 prototype, or the May 10th 1993 prototype. The intro is still clearly not being done converted yet, as scenes are missing and a lot of scenes weren't converted into sprites. In March 1993, issue 15 of Sega Force UK showed off a picture of the animation cells being displayed at a Sega World event. This would make the first instance of animation cells ever being shown off to the public. So let's take a look at them. Unfortunately, this is the only image of all these cells, except the one, the first one. In 2017, Twitter user Viscorin revealed that they had the same framed cells from an event for Sonic Jam in 1997 called Spring Game Show. So we have a better look at this one. You can see that these didn't age all that well because all the cells have line fading. This is a common problem for Japanese cells. This is due to the cells being poorly taken care of like sunlight exposure or really high temperatures and because of this the paint from the cells merge with the outlines of the cells almost erasing them. What about the other ones that have surfaced? There's a good handful that have been shown on Naoto Oshima's Twitter, the guy who designed Sonic. In 2017 he showed off some cells that he had kept after Sonic CD was done with its animation. He had shown off a cell from scene 5 of the opening, a cell from scene 8, and two cells from scene 9 of the ending. But hold on, let's take a look at that first cell again. If you look closely, you can see a cell of Sonic holding Amy from scene 1 of the ending. Again in 2017, the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter shared even more pictures of the CD cells. This time, we even got better pictures of cells from pretty much the same scenes we've already seen. We have these two cells from scene 8 of the opening, and this cell from scene 9 of the ending. Pretty good stuff that has been shown off. Is there any more? Actually yes, lastly we have this curious Sonic cell that even has its sketch. Now where did this come from you ask? Well it comes from Twitter this time from Masato Nishimura, one of the developers of Sonic CD. It's very awesome to see all the Sonic CD stuff, but how does something like the Sonic OVA compare? Let's find out. The Sonic the Hedgehog OVA was released in Japan around 1996 and was split into two VHS tapes, and around 1999 it was released on VHS in the US and contained both parts edited together to make it a whole film. And what has appeared over the years in terms of cells, well, I hate to break it to you, but there has been nothing. But not all hope is lost. Thankfully, on the back of the 1996 release of the OVAs, there are screenshots of the film cells. This is as close we are going to get. So the first screenshot we have is this one with Sonic on the plane. You can see more of the island on the sides, and you can see Sonic's true colors instead of the really light blue. Next we have is the scene with Robotnik's robots holding Sarah and the President. You notice that they aren't near the table as they are in the actual film, and you can see the cutoff on the right side. 
Next, you can see more of the scene with the shot. Metal Robotnik and Sonic are lower in the film cells, where they are placed too high in the actual scene. Now, this next one is an interesting one. As you can see, the film cell of Sonic and Tails look completely different from the screenshot. This is actually an unused cell from the scene and ends with the one in the screenshot. Next one we have isn't too interesting, but we get a better look at the scene with Knuckles saving Tails without the mist effect. This next one is also not too interesting, but we get to see the entire Robotropolis without the light effects. Now here's another interesting one. As you can see with the film cell scan, the cells in this scene are different colors compared to the screenshot. So what's the deal with this? This could be one of two things. The film cell is either a reshot of the scene, meaning that they repainted the cells, or the film is the original and made a less detailed scene. Also, you can see more with the film cell scan and note the different colors used. In the film cell, the metal Robotnik insides is red and the lights and the darks for Robotnik are switched compared to the screenshot. Next one is a nice shot of Metal Sonic without the red airbrush effect and glowing eyes, and can see more in the film cell. Next is the very iconic scene in the film, and there are some differences here compared to the screenshot. The film cell scan is actually corrected than what they shot in the film. Metal and Sonic are lower in the screenshot, and Sonic's figure 8 feet are behind him instead of being in front of him. Next one is a really interesting case. We have another reshot of a scene and you can really tell what Sonic in the film cell scan. If you look closely, Sonic is battle damaged and the sweat mark on his head is colored in and something else, if you look at Sonic's arm in the screenshot, they painted it wrong along with Metal Sonic's hand and then in the film cell scan it's been corrected, meaning that they did a reshot of the scene. Next one we finally get to see the scene without the lava head post processing and actually see the cutoff on Knuckles along with seeing the colors they use for this part of the OVA. And finally the last one, which we get a nice close up of everyone during the end of the film and that's pretty much it sadly. As cool as these film cell scans were, they weren't technically pictures of the animation cells, more like pictures of the film without all the editing. Now are there actual any pictures of the cells at all? There are, but in a way you wouldn't expect. In 1996, alongside the release of the OVA, they made three phone cards of the film, but hold on a second. You can immediately notice that these phone cards have pictures of the cells from the film on different backgrounds from the film. The first one we have is Sonic from the scene when they are running to Robotropolis. You can see they mix up a lot of stuff for these phone cards. Next is Tails from when he's hiding behind the bus in Robotropolis and gives the thumbs up, but they didn't even bother to use the frame of him giving it. And last one is this insanely cool one with Robotnik holding Metal Sonic from when Metal Sonic first emerges. And that's all we have for OVA stuff sadly, so let's move on to another type of media that Sonic has appeared in. We've pretty much covered cells from shows, games, and film, but what about another type of media? Commercials. That's right, oddly enough, we have some animation cells of Sonic from some TV commercials in the early 90s. First animation cell we have is probably one of the earliest instances of Sonic being animated. It's this blue armed Sonic from a commercial from Italy promoting Sonic 1. This is from the Jockey Prezoisi Sonic Badge commercial that features actor Jerry Kala who also voices Sonic in the commercial. Of course, the cell has a lot of inconsistencies for being one of the first animated takes of Sonic. Obviously the blue arms and has a weird shading on his muzzle. Very cool to see this after all this time in a great condition especially for something this old and not well known. Next cell we have is the cell from a Hidden Valley Ranch Pizza Ranch salad dressing commercial from Olive Jar in 1993. The cell of Sonic is in a very iconic pose and looks extremely nice, but something that you notice about the cell if you watch the commercial is that it's missing details like in the commercial. Those could be on another layer and since this is a commercial, more detailed animation is used. But another thing you'll notice is that this cell is signed by someone. It reads, Wendy, best wishes from your friends at Olive Jar. Sadly, Wendy herself doesn't seem to own this anymore since this comes from a site called the Blowout Cards Forum and was brought to a shop. Its whereabouts are unknown currently, but still an awesome cell of Sonic, so let's move on to the last one. Save this one for last as it's the most interesting one. Last we have this cell of Sonic from a General Mills commercial for Fruit Roll-Ups. 
Now, to my knowledge, there is no fruit roll-ups commercial with Sonic in it. I've looked everywhere on YouTube and found nothing, so what's the story with this? It comes from a rubber slug gallery called Goku to Sonic Cells, and they say, Dream Cell, holy wow. I never thought I'd have a cell from the Sonic the Hedgehog General Mills fruit roll-up commercial. The commercial was made in the early 1990s when Sonic was big. When I saw this cell on a Sonic cell site many years ago, I never thought he would sell it. I can't believe it's mine. It comes with a General Mills sticker and COA. Many thanks to the seller. I will treasure this cell forever. Smiley face. If that's true, then that means there is a commercial, but it's currently lost, so hopefully it gets found. As for the cell itself, it is very nice looking with a lot of detail, but the scan that we have is very small, as the last time Goku to Sonic's gallery was updated in 2006, so contacting them is out of the question. And with that, those are all the interesting and rare Sonic animation cells that have appeared over the years. Hopefully more interesting stuff appears and maybe a few boxes, or two, of the OVA cells surface someday. Maybe even the person who owns the Sonic Breakout Dr. Robotnik cell comes out. Who knows, but I know I can't wait to see what the future holds for Sonic cell collecting. So until then, we'll see.